Hi everyone, this is Ryan from safeeasytech.com and today we are doing our very first review ever and we're going to do it on Covenant Eyes, the internet accountability and filtering software. Now at the time of this video, I don't have any kind of financial relationship with Covenant Eyes, so this is an independent review um, that is going to be unbiased here. So I will say that I've been using Covenant Eyes for a very long time. Um, I've used it consistently for the last three years almost and I've used it multiple other times, off and on before that as well. So um, there's a lot of stuff out there. I've used some different ones over the years. I've used CloudSafe, um, uh, other like NetNanny, other things that I, I, other ones I can't even think of really at the moment. And I've also tried some of the free stuff that's out there as well, or just built into Windows. Um, but Covenant Eyes is by far the best. So we'll just start off by saying that um, it's outstanding software. It rarely, if ever, gives your computer or devices issues, um, especially on computers. I've had a few issues on and off with my phone um, over the last couple of years, but those have mostly gone away. I haven't really had any issues probably in the last year or so with, uh, with Covenant Eyes specifically. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in here. So there's a lot of different pieces of software you can get. So I want to I want to separate them out. So First off, you have um, filtering software. That's software where you try to go to a website, and if it's a website that's on a list or it has a certain uh, combination of words in it or something like that, that software gets blocked. And it can either be a list that's maintained on like a cloud server from the company that you're doing getting the software from, or it can be something that you build and generate yourself. So that's filtering software. Um, another kind of software that's out there is internet accountability software. So that software that kind of logs and monitors everything you do on your computer, but it doesn't actually stop you from looking at anything. You can look at anything you want, but what it does do is every time that you look at something that's over a certain threshold or a rating or something like that, it actually compiles that information and it can either be viewed on demand by certain people or it can be emailed to them. That's accountability software. And then the third kind of kind of monitoring parental control software that's out there is um, sometimes it's built into routers, but that's like parental controls or time limitation stuff. Firewalls sometimes do that as well. So that's software where you say, hey, during this time of the day, I don't want anyone to be able to access the internet. Or once it's reached this amount of time, I want the internet to get cut off. Um, that's the kind of stuff that that does. So the cool thing about Covenant Eyes is that it does all three of those things combined into one piece of software. So we'll just kind of take those one at a time here and what it does. So the interesting thing is that Covenant Eyes really focuses on internet accountability. And um, we'll go into some of the extra stuff that they offer here in a few minutes, but the software is really more designed around accountability. So how does that work? Well, how it works is you install it on your computer and I can show you it's running down here in mine. So this is Covenant Eyes here and it's always logged into your computer. And so you can right click it like I can and you can pull up your dashboard and I'm gonna show you that actually in just a second. Um, or you can view accountability reports for you or other people, but everyone has a login that uses it. So if you get the family version, which is $15 a month and it literally every single person, even if you have like like six kids and you know you can have as many people as you want on it that are in your immediate family everyone gets their own login and everyone gets their own report generated based off of what's set up for them so how that looks is you so today i've used the uh it's better just to show you here so let me show you so if we click on this is my dashboard uh, well this is actually my dashboard here but if you click on view reports you can look at, so let's just take a look at today so it doesn't have just a ton of stuff on it. And you can set the sensitivity level for whatever you want. I set mine sometimes on mature teen, sometimes on other stuff, but the options are teen mature, teen mature, and highly mature. So all websites are rated kind of like movies where they have um, ratings that are out there and you can set the threshold of what you want to view. So you choose the person because you can have multiple people. So I'm going to look at my own report and I want just an accountability report. I don't need a detailed browsing log. I'm not looking for anything specific. I just want a general snapshot of how did I do today? 
So the report loads up. Now these reports can be sent to whoever you want. You can actually have an unlimited amount of accountability partners. So mine goes to my wife and it also goes with um, the pastor at my church who I, I have a good relationship with and um, we do some discipleship stuff frequently. So it goes to him just so there's multiple people on there, but you can send it to as many people as you want. So when it pops up, it tells you the time frame. Um, it tells you whether or not the filter's active, and we're going to get into the filter here in a minute. It's not active on mine. Mine is just accountability. And then it tells you what sensitivity level you've chosen. So anything that's mature teen or above is going to show up on this review. But right off the bat, it says looks good in green letters. If there is something on there, it says um, needs review in red letters. And sometimes stuff does get flaw uh, uh, flagged where you're like, eh. That's just, obviously there's a reason for that. Maybe it's a website that you read like a good article, but it was on a website that sometimes has questionable material. It lists the link of what you actually looked at and it can be clicked on. So whoever gets your report can, you know, if, if they look at it and they go, oh, it doesn't look like it's something really bad, but I just wanna check it just to be safe to see if we need to have a conversation about it. They can click on the link and then they can check it out and then you guys can obviously talk. Um, now, if it showed up on your covenant eyes, it's safe to say that if they click on it, it's also going to show up on theirs. So <laughs> something to, it's kind of an interesting thing there. Sometimes you bounce around the same links from report to report if you're sharing a lot of reports with people. So, um, and then it gives you some tips, you know, once you've looked at it, you know, like, hey, let, let Ryan know, you know, great job, buddy. So it, it does a great job of describing the content and it describes what the filters mean here. Um, it shows any specific web searches that may have been searched for, like in Google or in Bing. Um, it catches pretty much everything. And this is across all devices. And then incidents are when, so an incident is when Covenant Eyes detects highly mature content. This is the stuff that you definitely would want to have a conversation about or, or just maybe check in on. That shows up right there at the top. And then the activity here, um, so that just kind of shows everything from today that was mature teen or above. So I had um, a couple of things here, which is actually just the launcher for uh, Hearthstone, the game Hearthstone. So um, it flags as mature teen because the game is rated mature teen. This shows you hourly average usage. So you can kind of see just time when the internet was being accessed. You can see spikes in time, stuff like that. And then if you have it installed on a phone, your phone apps that were run are gonna show up here. And it shows you when the app was installed and how much time was spent using it today. So you can kind of look through and you can see what I accessed today. And then it has the content rating descriptions. Again, just in case this is really long and you want to look at it on the bottom instead of having to scroll all the way up to the top here. So it's a really concise report. It's really helpful. So you get that. You can look at it for yourself. Uh, mine gets emailed to me and then it gets emailed to my accountability partners. So everyone kind of sees it. It sends it out pretty much on a weekly basis. Um, and that's how the accountability process works. Now, one of the other things that you can turn on for it is filtering. So let's say you have you know younger kids and you're like, well, accountability is great, but I really want to just help protect them because they're not at an age where they're at an age where they might get stuff accidentally not seeking it out. And so I want to make sure that they have some covering, they have some protection. This is also what so for Covenant Eyes, it also adds in uh, time management is filtered in to web content filtering as well. So you can actually block the internet completely. So they can get on the computer, but the internet will not work during certain times of the day, which is kind of neat. So you can adjust the filter. It's really customizable. Um, I've turned it on just to mess with it, but I haven't used it a whole lot. But I've seen some great reviews on it. It works really, really well. Um, and so you can set it uh, to where it pops up with an override if it's maybe websites that you want to access but your kids don't want to access um, and the great thing is is that because everyone uses a different username so if you have a family computer for example you can have this where when you're done using the internet you sign out and you don't have the automatically sign me in option so you know johnny your 13 year old sits down and he's doing stuff for school he clicks sign in signs in with his Covenant Eyes filter. Now the filter is completely changed to him and lets him access the things that he's allowed to access. So you can have five different you know, plus or, or more age groups of kids all using the same computer, if it's like a, an office or a family computer, and they all have different filters that are adjusted based on their age. So it's, it's really, really nice. There's not a lot of stuff out there that really does that. 
and you can have it on as many devices as you want. So, you know, Johnny can have it on his iPad and he can have it on the computer that he shares with the rest of the family as well. And he still has the, um, the same like filtering and accountability flags and all that stuff on both devices. Now the Android app doesn't do filtering. Um, but it does do the accountability stuff like you just saw from mine there. So that's one of the really, 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 really great things about Covenant Eyes. So that's a real basic, that doesn't go into really a lot of in-depth stuff, but um, you, you know, you never really know with the accountability, you never really know it's running. It's just kind of always there. Mine logs me in automatically as soon as I start my computer. Um, so I, don't, I just forget it's there, except for when I get the emails once a week and I'm like, oh yeah. Um, so it's kind of one of those things that it's there to help you, um, but it's not like intrusive unless you want it to be. Then in that case, you can turn on the filter and make it super tight and you can make it really intrusive. One of the other really good things about Covenant Eyes. So, um, we'll get to pricing here in a second, but their blog is really, really good. They've got some great tips on there, um, that covers just really specific areas in um, lesson pornography, marriage stuff, kids stuff, integrity stuff. And so they've always got content coming out pretty much um, every couple of days that talks about different topics in this area. And it's usually really, really good stuff. So um, you can check that out for free. You don't have to be a member of Covenant Eyes, but it just kind of tells you a little bit of the heart behind the company and what they're trying to do. So last thing here that we'll take a look at is the pricing. So this is the value piece of it. So is it really worth it? And it's probably the biggest debatable part of it. So a personal account is $11 a month. You have to add on filtering for like a dollar. Uh, it's like almost $2 to add on filtering. So you're pretty much paying the family rate at that point, which allows you to have unlimited accounts um, and unlimited devices like forever. And it's just 15 bucks a month. So, um, but you also can do unlimited installations on the personal account as well. It's just your user account. So it's, it's, it's going to be you, but you can install it on your phone, your tablet, your computer, anything that it'll install on. So that's kind of the pricing between them. And then if you go work for a church or something like that, there's group rates as well um, that you can get that give you kind of a discount. They're personal accounts, um, but they're, uh, but they give you a, a discount for multiple people signing up kind of all under the same organization. So you can contact them for that and they kind of do all that on their end and sign you up for that. So that's Covenant Eyes in a nutshell. As far as the price goes, I think it's worth it. Um, I've, I've had it on my computer a long time. It's just the peace of mind that's there. There's just so much stuff that you can just accidentally, I mean, it's even, even me as tech savvy as I am, I mean, I do this for a living. It still is so easy to click on something. And I've done that, you know, where I've been like, um, you know, you click on an ad thinking one thing and it's like a bait and switch ad. And you're like, oh, that article would have been interesting, but it's not actually that article. It's something really bad that I don't want to be looking at, you know? And so then you, but you know that it's on there. So you're like, oh, I'm just going to close that down and I'll just talk to, you know, my, my partner, my accountability partners about it when it pops up and just let them know what happened. Um, it's just, it takes a lot of stress away having that extra layer there, knowing that, um, you know, you've got people that are keeping an eye on you in a good way and in a loving way. And so it's not a, it's not a berating thing. You know, people don't look at reports. That's why you get to choose who gets your report and you don't have to send it to anyone if you don't want to, but I really challenge you to send it to at least one other person because it's, it's helpful when you know that other person's looking at it. And, um, as long, and if you get to pick them, you know, you're not going to pick someone that's going to be like, oh, gotcha. Um, you can pick someone that is going to really lovingly want to help you, um, and, and kind of keep that on track for you. So I think it's great. I think, I think you can't really live without it. Um, this is such a big deal and, um, just pornography, the other stuff that you can get onto online is just so pervasive, um, in the internet zone that I, I don't see how you can afford to not have this on here. It's something that I would make room for in your budget. 15 bucks a month for your entire family is a steal. Um, and so I think it's worth every penny and I would run it on there. I mean, I run it on there for just me and my wife. Um, so 
that's Covenant Eyes. I'd love to talk to you guys more about it. If you have more questions, feel free to let me know. Um, like I said, I've had it installed for a really long time. So if you have specific questions that I didn't cover, you can ask me in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to answer those for you. Um, you can also hit me up on the website uh, at safeeasytech.com slash feedback is our feedback form where you can ask questions or give suggestions on there also. Um, or you can comment at the bottom of the article on our, on our webpage. Um, or you can comment on Facebook or Twitter or send me an email, whatever you want to do. There's lots of ways to get in touch with me. But um, if you have any questions, please don't let me know. Please, please let me know rather. And I'd be more than happy to answer them. But until next time, thank you guys so much for sticking with me. Um, I am Ryan and now you're set. Very first one that I see. And so right off the bat, there's some really great information that you as parents can look at and can see what's going on with the app. So the first is there's a video. So you can click on that video, you can play it, you can watch what's going on, see the content. Some of them are what we call cinematics, which means that it's like a it's a, a CGI generated or maybe even a live action video that advertises the game and doesn't actually show the game itself. But those usually aren't very common for a lot of mobile apps just because they, they don't have the budget to do it or it's just kind of not, they're trying to crank out a bunch of apps and so they just don't do it. So most of the time you're going to get some really good gameplay footage of what the game is actually like, which will give you a good indicator. Um, but but be careful of that though, because sometimes you will get it. You can usually tell if it looks more like a movie, that's probably what we would call a cinematic. It's probably not the game. Um, you might can find some screen.